Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're tackling crypto scams, Ooh. but with a focus on how these scams are hitting people in poorer countries way harder yeah. than elsewhere. A really important topic. And yeah, and we're going to be using this guide called <laughs> um, <laughs> Crypto Scams Hitting Poorer Countries Harder. Catchy title. It's the complete safety guide. Yeah. So think of this deep dive as like your crash course on how to spot these scams. For sure. And how to safeguard yourself, yeah. especially if you're new to crypto or yeah. if you live in a region with like limited financial resources. It's especially, I think what's fascinating and frankly alarming is how these scams, they prey on like universal desires. Oh, totally. Like the dream of quick riches, yeah. the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. But they become even more potent mm. when you combine that with the specific vulnerabilities that people in these regions face. So the promise of quick wealth it just becomes almost irresistible. Yeah, and it's not even just about the financial losses. Well, I can't imagine the emotional toll right. on these people who lost their savings, Yeah, their hopes for a better future. The guide actually mentions that in a lot of cases, these scams like wiped out entire families' life savings, oh, pushing them deeper into poverty. Oh. It's a devastating cycle. Yeah, it's really heartbreaking. Yeah. But let's back up for a sec and talk about like the different types of scams that are out there. Because some of these tactics are so sophisticated um, that even tech savvy people can fall prey. Absolutely. Like I was reading about phishing. Oh yeah, phishing's a good one. It's more than just like a simple email scam these days. It's way more than that. Right. They're using advanced techniques like URL manipulation. What's that? To create websites that look almost identical to like legitimate crypto exchanges. So, like, they're changing, like, one character in the web address. Exactly. And most people won't even notice the difference. Oh, wow. And so when you enter your login details on that fake site boom. Oh, no. They got your credentials and access to your crypto. That's so sneaky. It is. Okay, so phishing is about stealing your login info. Mm -hmm. What about these rug pull scams I keep hearing about? Oh, uh, yes. Are those related to ICOs? You're right on the money. Okay. So remember, an ICO is an initial coin offering. Mm -hmm. It's basically a way for crypto startups to raise funds oh, okay. by selling tokens. Yeah. But scammers have figured out how to exploit this system. Oh, no. They create a hyped up project, ah. often promising like unrealistic returns. Uh -huh. Get people to invest in their worthless tokens and then vanish. So they just take off with the money. They pull the rug out from under everyone. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a pump and dump scheme, yeah. but with a whole new level of deception? Precisely. They artificially inflate the value of their fake token, uh, get you to buy in and then cash out, leaving you holding the bag of worthless digital assets. Man, it feels like there's a new scam popping up every single day. I know. Are there any red flags we can look out for to avoid falling into these traps? Absolutely. One major red flag is anything that promises guaranteed returns yeah. in the crypto world. Okay. Remember, crypto is inherently volatile, mm -hmm. and no legitimate investment can guarantee profits. Right. It's like that old saying, if it sounds too good to be true. It probably is. It probably is. Yep. I'm... But what about those fake giveaways and impersonation scams? Oh, yeah, those are good ones, too. How do those work? Fake giveaways, they often lure victims through social media or messaging apps. Okay. They'll promise you free crypto if you just send like a small amount yeah. to verify your wallet address. So they get you to pay a fee to receive your free crypto. Exactly. And then you never get anything in return. <sighs> and impersonation scams can be even more elaborate. Oh, really? Scammers might pretend to be celebrities, crypto influencers, or even government officials. Wow. Using social media or email to solicit crypto donations or investments. So they're playing on people's trust mm -hmm. in authority figures or their desire to be like associated with someone famous. Exactly. It's insidious. It is. And then there's a technical side with like malware and fake apps. Oh yeah. That are designed to steal your private keys. Wait, back up for a second. What exactly are private keys? Okay. And why are they so important? I think some of our listeners might not be familiar with that term. You're right. That's a really good point. Yeah. It's crucial to understand this. So think of your private key as like a super secret password. That gives you access to your crypto wallet. So if someone gets a hold of my private key, they can essentially drain my wallet. Exactly. It's like handing over the keys to your bank vault. Got it. That's why it's critical to never share your private keys with anyone, no matter what. Okay, so malware and fake apps are designed to steal these keys. Yes. How does that even work? So scammers will often disguise malicious software as like legitimate 
crypto trading apps or wallets. Uh -huh. And once you download and install them, they can secretly access your private keys mm. or record your login credentials. It's like a digital Trojan horse. It is. So downloading anything crypto related should be done with extreme caution. Absolutely. Always stick to official app stores. Okay. And do your research before downloading anything. Mm -hmm. Check reviews. Look for security certifications. Okay. And be wary of any app that asks for like unnecessary permissions. So it sounds like we need to be extra vigilant in the crypto world. Why do? But why are people in poorer countries particularly vulnerable to these scams? That's a great question. Is it just about financial desperation? Or is there more to it? There's definitely more to it. And that's where we'll pick up in the next part of our deep dive. Okay. We'll explore the specific factors that make these regions more susceptible to crypto scams. Okay. And what we can do to help protect ourselves and our communities. I am ready to dive deeper. <laughs> so we talked about like all the tactics that scammers use. Yeah. But now let's explore why these scams are particularly effective in like poorer countries. Okay. The guide points to like a few key factors mm -hmm. that kind of create this perfect storm of vulnerability. All right, lay it on me. Okay. I'm ready to go deeper. Okay, so one major factor is the lack of access. Okay. To yeah. traditional financial services. Okay. Like in a lot of developing countries, banks are simply out of reach right. for a huge part of the population. Yeah. They might not have the right documentation, uh -huh. live too far from a branch, yeah. or face like really high fees. Okay. So then crypto, with its promise of decentralized finance and easy access, seems like a lifeline. Exactly. <laughs> it offers a way to send and receive money, even invest, without needing a bank account. Right. But this lack of familiarity with traditional finance can also make people more susceptible to scams. How so? They might not have the same level of awareness about financial risks <laughs> or the same skepticism towards get-rich-quick schemes. It's almost like they're leaping from financial exclusion. Right. Straight into, like, the Wild West of crypto. Totally. Without the safety net of regulations or consumer protections. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Okay. And that brings us to the second major factor. Okay. What's that? Limited financial literacy. Right. In many of these regions, financial education is simply not a priority. Yeah. Or it's not accessible in a way that's relevant to people's lives. So people might not have the knowledge or skills right. to spot the red flags, the that, scam, yeah. or to understand how crypto really works, mm -hmm. or to like evaluate investment risks. Whoa. Exactly. And then when you combine that with economic hardship, oh yeah, the allure of these scams becomes even more powerful. Yeah. Imagine you're struggling to, like, put food on the table mm -hmm. and someone comes along promising you that you can turn a small investment into a fortune. I mean, that's got to be tempting. It is. It's easy to see how desperation can cloud judgment. Yeah, for sure. And that's exactly what scammers prey on. Right. They know that when people are struggling, they're more likely to take risks, uh -huh. to grasp at any opportunity that promises a better life. So we've got limited access to banking, mm -hmm. low financial literacy, yes. economic desperation. Yes. It's like a recipe for disaster. It's a tragic situation. Yeah. And then you add in the third factor. Okay, there's more. Weak regulatory oversight. Okay. And it becomes even more dangerous. Right. In many developing countries, the regulatory frameworks for crypto are either non-existent or poorly enforced. So it's like the Wild West out there. Pretty much. With scammers operating with impunity. Yeah. And the problem is compounded by the cross-border nature of crypto. Right. These scams often originate in countries with stricter regulations, mm -hmm. making them even harder to track down and prosecute. So we've got this perfect storm of vulnerability. Yeah. But how are these scams actually playing out in these poorer countries? Like, right. what are some specific tactics they're using? Well, the guide gives some pretty chilling examples. Okay. Um, one common tactic is leveraging existing community structures. Oh, okay. Like they might infiltrate close-knit communities or religious groups, mm -hmm. exploiting the trust that exists within those networks. So it's like a pyramid scheme on steroids right. spreading through word of mouth right. and okay. preying on people's trust in their friends and family. Exactly. And another tactic is tailoring scams to local contexts. Okay. For example, in regions with high mobile phone penetration, oh. scammers might exploit mobile money platforms. Oh, yeah. Sending out phishing messages that mimic legitimate transactions. Like I remember reading about a case in Kenya where scammers were sending out fake M-Pesa messages. Yes. Tricking people into revealing their PIN and codes. Exactly. And in other cases, they might disguise their scams as like 
government aid programs. Wow. Or economic empowerment initiatives. Really? Targeting those who are most desperate for help. So it's not just about financial exploitation. No. It's about exploiting people's hope for a better future. Mm -hmm. Their trust in their community. Yeah. Their belief in the potential of crypto to change their lives. It's really disheartening. It is. It's really disheartening. Yeah. And it's a reminder that while crypto has this like huge potential to empower people, mm -hmm. it can also be a tool for exploitation if we're not careful. Absolutely. So what can we do to protect ourselves and our communities? Yeah. Is there any hope in this situation? Absolutely. There's a lot we can do. And that's what we'll focus on the next part of our deep dive. Okay. We'll explore like practical tips and strategies oh. for navigating the crypto world safely even in the face of all these challenges. All right, so we've uncovered some of the dark side of crypto, yeah, especially for those in poorer countries. Mm. But knowing is half the battle, right? <laughs> it is. So now let's talk solutions. Go. Oh. What can we do to protect ourselves and our communities? I think awareness is like our most powerful weapon. Okay. We've got to educate ourselves. Yeah. Spread the word about these scams, especially to those who are most vulnerable. So knowledge is power. But where do we even begin? Well, the guide we're looking at yeah. has some really practical advice Okay. that I think everyone should take to heart. Okay, I'm listening. First and foremost, always verify your sources. Okay. Don't just blindly trust anything you see online mm -hmm. or hear from someone you know. Easier said than done, though, right? How do we actually verify things in the crypto world? Good point. Yeah. So you can start by checking websites mm -hmm. and social media accounts for legitimacy. Okay. Look for official certifications, established track records, oh. genuine user reviews. Okay. If something seems too good to be true, yeah. it probably is. Right. Trust your gut and don't be afraid to ask questions. So skepticism is our friend. Definitely another crucial tip is to stick to reputable platforms. Okay. There are well-known regulated crypto exchanges and wallets out there. Mm -hmm. Do your research. Yeah. Choose wisely. Okay. Don't be tempted by like, obscure platforms right. that promise unrealistic returns or quick profits. Got it. Stick to the known and trusted players. Exactly. What else can we do to boost our security? This one cannot be emphasized enough to protect your private keys. Okay. Like they're the crown jewels. Yeah. Never share them with anyone no matter what. Yeah, we talked about this earlier. Yes. But it bears repeating. It does. Your private keys are the gateway to your crypto fortune. Exactly. And enable two-factor authentication on all your accounts. Okay. It's like a simple but effective security measure. Two-factor authentication. Yes. Got it. That adds an extra layer of protection. Anything else? Stay informed. Okay. The crypto landscape is constantly evolving, mm -hmm. and so are the scams. Right. Keep up with the latest news security trends and warnings from trusted sources. Okay. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be to spot and avoid scams. So it's like a continuous learning process. It is. We can't just learn the basics and call it a day. Exactly. And if you're ever unsure about something, yeah. don't hesitate to reach out to someone you trust for advice. That's a good point. Sometimes a second opinion can really save you. For sure. From a costly mistake. Absolutely. And remember, this isn't just about protecting ourselves. Yeah. It's also about protecting our communities. That's true. Talk to your friends, family, neighbors mm -hmm. about these scams. Yeah. Share the knowledge. Okay. Help them stay safe. It's like a neighborhood watch, but for the digital world. Exactly. Yeah. By working together and spreading awareness, we can create a safer and more inclusive crypto ecosystem. That's the goal. For everyone. So in a nutshell, our defense against crypto scams comes down to education awareness and a healthy dose of skepticism. Precisely remember, knowledge is power vigilance is key. Mm -hmm. And together we can outsmart these scammers and protect ourselves and our communities. Well, this has been a really eye-opening deep dive. Yeah. Um, thanks for shedding light on this crucial topic. My pleasure. Always happy to contribute to a safer crypto world. Absolutely. And to our listeners, stay safe, stay informed. Yes. And keep exploring the fascinating world of crypto. Yeah. Responsibly, of course. Please. Uh, until next time.